Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna be talking about using configurations and Derive inside of Fusion. Now, if you want more information on Derive, we've already covered that in its own video, talking about some of the nuances of using Derive and use cases for it. This video is gonna focus specifically on how to get the most out of using Derive with configurations. So first, we should understand what is a configuration. If we're going to take a look at this example here, we have a hearth joint which has various configurations that give us different size options for the outside diameter and the number of teeth. Going back and forth between these different configurations is a great way for us to create variations of a similar design element. This is done using configuration tables and figuring out which parameters we want to drive and change for those various configurations. Now you might be wondering, why do we need to use derive when we have configurations? Well, generally you don't need to because if you have a component with configurations, you'll be able to select which configuration you're using when you insert it into a new design. This is a great way for us to insert an externally referenced design, and we can always take a look at which configurations are used and add things like assembly context to them. However, if you do want to make additional changes to a configured component, after you export it, that would be a good use case for a derive. So let's talk about how we make that happen. And in the context of our design, there are four different options that we might come across. We're gonna start with the most common and the best use case option. Now, what I mean by that is first, we should take a note that our configuration names represent the outside diameter and the number of teeth. These are two critical elements to our configuration. Generally, when you create a configuration, you're going to name it something that makes sense, whether it's a part number or represents some sort of geometry or change in your design. So we want to carry that information into our derive, and we do that by going to derive, selecting the type as derive objects, and in our case, we're going to select the top level component. The configuration is inside of this component, which is our top level for our design. That component carries bodies, sketches, construction geometry, and if we expand our parameters at the bottom, we can even bring in the parameters from our component that were used to configure. We'll say OK, and take a look at our new derive, which contains a subcomponent with the name of our configuration. Now, this is the important bit, because now we can make additional changes. We can modify our design, for example, add a small chamfer to this edge. And this design will keep these changes and not affect the original configured assembly at all. What we want to do from here is save this design. We're going to call it 100OD-40T because that's the configuration we're interested in. And now we can insert that back into our design. So for example, if we want to bring this in, we can simply place it at the correct location and orientation. And now we've added this component, in this case, our 100OD-40T into our assembly. That is the basic process, and whether or not you're configuring components and subcomponents or larger assemblies, the process will still be the same as long as you make the correct selection using your derive objects. But now, let's take a look at the other options that you might come across when you're doing this. I'm going to go ahead and change this to a different configuration, 125OD-50T, and go to Derive. So in our first example, we use derive objects selecting that top level of our configuration. If we still use derive objects, but this time we select the body on the screen, even if we use parameters and bring from components, we want to make note that our objects show only the body. If we say OK, our new derive object has no reference to the original configuration name. We expand our bodies. It's simply called body1. We expand and look at our change parameters. Notice that those parameters did not come over with that component because we manually selected the body. So this is a common mistake when trying to bring over a configured version of your part or component. You make that selection to the body on the screen. So we want to make sure we don't use that option. But what happens if we use create derive? Let's go back to our original configuration. Let's make a change here and select 150OD-50T. Go to Derive and select Derive Component instead. Well, in this case, if I select the body on the screen, this is going to bring over our component. It looks very similar to the first time we did this. It was able to bring in these references, and we can bring in our parameters from our component. 
However, when we do this, we no longer get a subcomponent in our design. And again, there is no reference back to those original parameters or the name of our configuration. If we go into change parameters, however, we did bring in our user parameters so we could gather that information. In this case, 150 OD 50 T. So while this information is available, it's not the ideal method to bring it over. Let's go back and take a look at one last option. Once again, if we go to create and derive, this time again, we select derive components, but we select our top level. This is the same process we used for our first and ideal example. However, we use derive object. This time we're gonna say, okay, once again, noting that now we still don't have our subcomponent. We have not carried over the name of our configuration, but we do have our modified change parameters and we can expand and gather that information if needed. So just to give a quick recap to make sure we understand the ideal method to get this information over. If we have a configured component, this case, we can insert it into an assembly and we can configure that component or switch configurations at any point in time by going back and toggling on various configuration options. However, if we want to make some additional changes or adjustments to a version of a configuration, then we want to use derive. And the best method to do that is by selecting derive, using derive objects, and selecting the top level component that contains our configurations and the bodies underneath it. This will allow us to bring in a subcomponent with our configuration name, as well as carry over those user parameters, so that way we can gather information about what was used to create this design. If you have any questions on this, please leave them in the comments. I know that this is a very tricky topic, but hopefully this sheds some light on the various ways that we can gather that information and use Derive when we're configuring our components.